Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and in this video we're going to do the full review of this HTC One S and uh, this handset price has been reduced a lot in India. Initially when it was launched it was priced at 33,000 but now you can get this at 25,000 and I feel at that price this is a very attractive handset. And before going into the in-depth review, I want to thank Faisal Communication for providing this unit for review. And I have been very impressed with this handset. I have been testing it for the last couple of days and I like it very much. So let's get into the review. First, let me give you a physical overview. The handset is beautifully carved and it is very comfortable to hold. The screen size on this is a 4.3 inch screen and it's a super AMOLED screen. So the viewing angles, everything is very good. Even in bright sunlight, when I kept the uh, brightness settings to auto, it was very legible. So you can use this phone in bright sunlight also. And regarding the screen quality, I don't have any problems, but if you keep the brightness at as very low, the screen becomes a little bit pinkish. Apart from that, it's great. Uh, let me first give you a physical overview of the phone. On the top, actually, we have this 3.5mm headphone jack. We have a, a extra mic that is used for noise cancellation. And this is uh, the door. You can pry it open. You can check out my uh, unboxing and first boot of the phone to get an idea regarding this, uh, where I show you how to insert the micro SIM in this. And this is the power on off button, volume rocker, pretty long and convenient, nothing else. And if you look, how slim is the phone? It's very slim phone, I have to say. And on the bottom, we have one more microphone. And if we move to the side, we have the micro USB slot over here. Not the biggest fan of it, but it's over this side. And moving towards the back, we have a very good 8 megapixel camera. I'll talk about it later. We have LED flash. HTC logo and this is anodized aluminium and it's very nice to hold again as it's uh, aluminium heat gets transferred I'll talk about it a bit later it does support beats audio and I tested it with earphones and I was really impressed and we also have this uh, speaker grill over here and I would say the speaker performance is okay not great it's not very loud but adequate and uh, out of the box this uh, phone ships with Android version 4 that is ICS let me show you the same and if you go to about the phone and hit the software info, it says that it's running the Android version 4.0.3 and HTC sends 4.0. Again, HTC has uh, mentioned that this phone is going to get the Jelly Bean update. Regarding the storage, the phone comes with a built-in 16 GB of storage and you do not get a micro SD card. So you are stuck with that storage and uh, you get about 2 GB for your apps and about 10 GB for your storage. So that's for the storage. Some people will not like it, but uh, if that storage is okay for you, this is a great phone. And moving towards the front, we have fr a front facing VGA camera. I tried Skype on it and it worked beautifully. And here is the nice big, uh, what do you say, earpiece. But in my testing, I had a problem with this. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think so this is a bad unit that I got. In my call testing from the earpiece, the voice was cracking a lot. Uh, it was like the speaker was blown out. But surprisingly, when I was keeping the volume at 100%, it was fine. But when I was reducing it below 70%, the voice was cracking. I think so this is an isolated issue, but I just wanted to highlight that. And we also do have a LED notification light over here. But it is so tiny, as you can see these holes, one of the holes is that LED notification light and it is really tiny while charging. Yes, you can see it. But uh, when I got missed calls or something like that and the phone, I kept the phone about two feet away. I was hardly able to see the same. So the LED notification light is there, but it does not uh, serve the pur purpose in my opinion. And moving towards the bo bottom, we have these three uh, touch type capacitive buttons back home and the multitasking tray. And this is how HTC likes to multitask. I'm not the biggest fan of it but you can quickly switch between applications using the same and you do get seven home screens and you can access them like this and let me now get back to the hardware details this uh, version in india uh, sports the 1.7 gigahertz dual core processor it's not the snapdragon s4 processor but the snapdragon s3 processor and also the gpu is a little bit bumped down but uh, in my testing uh, i did not feel that uh, the phone was sluggish it was buttery smooth and i did a lot of multitasking etc also I'll show you the benchmarks uh, later on, but if you are uh, buying this phone in some other regions, you might get the superior S4 processor. And the RAM on this phone is 1 GB and HTC did a good optimization. I did not have any problem while multitasking and I never had to close any applications. So 1 GB uh, RAM is fine with this phone. And throughout my testing, I did not face any lag issues or something like that. 
before uh, I proceed, let me also talk about this Beats audio. I did test uh, this uh, audio with uh, earphones, but I did not use the standard uh, earphones that HTC supplied because they are ordinary and rubbish. For testing, I used my, these are not high-end uh, earphones, but the Creative EP630. Uh, and I use them a lot so I know the audio quality and I have to say I was really impressed with the audio quality provided uh, on this handset and um, you can enable Beats Audio if you would like and what it does is basically adds a little bit of bass and depth. Uh, sound purists won't like that but uh, it does give a good effect and I enjoyed it. And as I said this phone runs on the Sense UI. Uh, and this is the app tray and you get this frequent and you can also access all the downloaded apps directly from this so that's a nice touch and uh, some people like the sense ui some don't and i would say that sense ui runs fine on this phone it does not add any lag or something like that so in my testing uh, that was not an issue now i'm connected to wi-fi so let's quickly just fire up this web browser and this is google i'm going to share my location whatever let's just first go to tech2bus.com and again the keyboard is also very comfortable to type because it's pretty wide and in general i like the feel of the phone it's very comfortable to hold and also it's very light and i'm hoping opening this tech2bus.com site and again if you see how quickly it loaded and again pinch to zoom is also pretty smooth no issues and as this is a htc phone let me open a big article let's say this one and uh, we do get what do you say text reflow that's a nice touch in HTC phones that uh, you get and if you notice let this page load first uh, if I zoom in the text would reflow automatically as you can see if I just zoom out the text reflow so this is ideal uh, this is a really good feature and i find it uh, nice that htc phones employ that it does add a half a second of delay or so but it is really good and it works so let us just go to a heavy website like engadget oops yeah let's go to engadget uh, the full web version not the mobile version and if you notice how quickly it loaded really fast web browsing and everything was really fast on this phone and in general the performance uh, was really great i did not fa face any lags or something like that it's a pretty long page if you can see still loading actually and let's try the pinch gesture now and as you can see again it's fine So the text reflow does take half a second or so that's a feature of HTC phone as I said I also tried third-party browsers like Chrome etc and they were also pretty good but you don't get that text reflow in uh, third-party browsers like Chrome etc so in terms of web browsing I have no issues with the phone it's really good so let me get out and uh, <clears throat> let me also fire up this uh, YouTube app and and let me take some of my own videos and let me show you the same let's uh, play back this HTC One S unboxing video itself and hi there this is Ranjit from TechToBus.com and in this video we're going to do the and you can see it's uh, showing in high S quality and I know that it's been a while so no problem regarding the same and I also tested the media playback on this phone and it was also very smooth in terms of media playback also it was very good let me show you the same I have uh, downloaded this MX player and I have these clips let me first play this uh, nature clip and uh, this is a 1080p clip and it plays flawlessly on this phone no problems I'll show you the same and as you can see it plays it flawlessly and due to the super amulet screen also the colors everything is really good so it's a good uh, phone for watching videos etc and let me also show you this uh, 720p video again this is a very high bit uh, uh, video and this also plays flawlessly 
So in terms of media playback, I did not face any issues with this phone. Again, you need to install a third party app like MX Player, which is free from the Google Play Store. So let me get out of that. Now moving towards the camera, uh, the rear facing camera is an 8 megapixel and I have to say it's really good and uh, it does have a LED flash also and let me just quickly invoke this camera app and you do get various uh, options like touch to focus and if you notice it does make this sound when you tap. And directly from this screen, you can start taking a video like this. Let me take a video. I'm shooting a video now to so show you the same. That's my desk. It's really messy. And directly from here also, you can switch and take photographs. And another unique thing is that while taking the videos, you can also take still snaps. Let me show you the video. And do note, this is in completely artificial light. Very little lighting as of now in my office. And as you can see, it uh, shoots it uh, without any issues. So I found the video taking capabilities also to be very good. Coming to the camera, that's also really good. And as you noticed, how quickly it takes the snaps. I actually have taken a bunch of uh, snaps. So let me show you the same. And we also do get this burst option. And these are some of the snaps I've taken. Uh, I'll show you all these in full screen so that you can get a better idea. But overall, I'm impressed with the camera performance of this phone. And also, you do get this burst option. For example, let me show you the same. If you hold on uh, this, uh, uh, it'll take a lot of shots. So let me show you the same. I, I've taken a 10 of photographs and the burst shot also works fine. So I'm just going to get out of this. I'm, I'm just going to select one best shot and delete all the shots. So that's the camera. Uh, now I'll show you all these uh, pictures in full screen so you get a better idea of the same. And these pictures were taken with the HTC One S outdoors and it was a pretty sunny day. And if you can see, the pictures come out to be great. The color accuracy also was very good. The pictures are very vibrant in my opinion. And these pictures were taken in semi-indoor conditions. And this was taken in my office in completely artificial lighting. And do notice there is very little noise in this picture. So in my opinion, the camera on One S is pretty good. Moving to the front facing camera, uh, HTC decided to put just a VGA camera. And I did some Skype calls on the same and it was good. Uh, I would have uh, loved to see a higher pixel camera on the front facing camera. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Now, uh, let me also show you the multi-touch tester and here I was a little bit disappointed because we are just getting two touch points. That's really, really a disappointment because I thought at least it will have five touch points. So it might be an issue in some of the games, but uh, moving to the benchmarks uh, before that, uh, let me just kill all these apps that are running in the background. So you can swipe them off like this. Again, uh, in my testing, uh, I didn't face any problems and I didn't have to kill apps and you will just kill all the apps and I'll show you this Android system info. And as you can see, uh, out of that one GB, we roughly get about 375 MB of free when all apps are killed. Uh, and in terms of uh, RAM usage, I didn't have any problems. Uh, so that's okay. And now let's do some benchmarking and the first one we'll do is Nina Mark 2 that will test the GPU performance and I ran it earlier also and as you can see we got a score of 47.2. Do note that as this model in India is coming with the S3 processor, uh, the GPU is not the Adreno 225 but 220 but then also the performance was uh, really good. And I tried it with a lot of games and uh, all of them uh, ran flawlessly. So even for gaming, uh, this phone is pretty good, you won't have a problem. Only one thing that I noticed is that while heavily stressing the phone, as it's aluminium, this portion gets a little bit warm. And the Nina Mark 2 test is almost done. And as you can see, we got a very healthy score of 50.6 FPS. Let me publish it. So many people were thinking that this phone is not good for gaming. No, they are completely wrong. Uh, even with the S3 processor that has this Adreno 220, it is really good for gaming. So no issues regarding that. Well, let me get out of this. And I also ran, what do you say, this quadrant and uh, uh, this AT&T test. I'm not going to run it again because it does take a lot of time. But uh, 
I saved those screenshots, so let me show you the same. First, let me show you this is the quadrant uh, benchmark, and I got a score of 3860, which I have to say is pretty good because I have this uh, Galaxy Nexus, which is my personal phone, and this has a dual core processor. And uh, in Nina Mark, we get a score of just about 2200 to 2300 on this phone. And uh, let me give you the breakdown. The total is 3860. Out of that, the CPU got a score of 6930. Memory got a score of 3603. IO got a score of 5932. 2D got a score of 654. 3D 2179. And let us also, uh, let me also show you one second. Let me fire up ATNTU benchmark that I've done. And this is the ATNTU benchmark that uh, we did. And the total score that I got is 7321. Let me show you the breakdown. And this is the total breakdown. You can just pause the screen to check the scores. So uh, in benchmarks, uh, we got really good results. So no issues regarding the same. Also, I tested with quite a bit of games and I didn't have any problems. Let me just run this uh, Temple Run game to show you the same. Also in terms of touch, uh, the touch was extremely good, so no issues. So as you can see, it plays this game flawlessly without any issues. So let me get out. Oops. Uh, coming to messaging also, I didn't have any issues because uh, the keyboard, as I said, is pretty wide. So it's really easy to type and we do get this uh, predictive text and it's pretty good. Uh, so that's uh, good and it also has this ICS based uh, voice recognition. So let's give it a try. This is a test for voice dictation. Voice dictation. So as you can see it works but there is a delay. There is a long delay in my opinion. So I don't know if it's because of my internet connection or something like that, but the delay was there uh, when I used this voice function. And now let me also show you the dialer. We get the standard HTC dialer, which is pretty good. And let me try this. And let me put it on the speakerphone. And uh, the speakerphone is pretty good, uh, but again, as I said earlier, uh, in this piece that I got, the earpiece cracks a little bit, so that's one issue I have. Uh, so how do I feel about this phone? I'm really impressed with this phone. I like a lot of features about this phone. The two cons that I have is this earpiece, but that again, as I mentioned, it might be just this uh, lemon that I got. And uh, as this is an aluminum back, and as you can see, my uh, it catches the sweats like this and uh, the thing is that uh, when the phone is stressed uh, this back portion uh, quickly becomes warm so that is one issue i have this with this phone uh, also uh, the fact that we have just two touch points is kind of a bummer also in terms of the battery life the battery life on this phone is a 1650 milliampere battery and we cannot remove the battery it's sealed inside and with normal moderate usage, I was able to get it get one uh, working day. But if you stress the phone a little bit with heavy usage, you might have to charge this phone uh, after 14 or 15 hours. So I would have loved to have a bigger battery, let's say about 1800 milliampere or so, something like that. Uh, apart from that, I love everything about this phone. It's great to hold. It's one of the best built Android phones in my opinion. And the camera also, as we have seen, is really good. And now as the price in India has been significantly reduced, to around 25,000 or so. This uh, phone is a big thumbs up in my opinion. I hope you found this video review helpful. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and I hope to see you in my next video.